हेलो हेलो कैसे पता लगे आगे ठीक है हेलो हाँ सर
आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही मेरे को पता है जी आवाज नहीं आ रही आपकी हाँ भाई यार ये तो घूम गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग Good morning, sir. Sir, am I audible? Yes. Yes. Sir, could you please uh, just check your camera? Uh, you are not properly visible. Yeah, it's good now. Okay, sir. So we. Okay. Uh, so, sir, we will. A very good morning to everyone. I Anshuman Upadhyay feel extremely honored to see you all in this international webinar on challenges in global research in agriculture and technology. Sir, आवाज आ रही है? हाँ, आवाज आ रही है आपकी? जी सर. So, good morning, everybody. I Anshuman Upadhyay feel extremely honored to see you all in this international webinar on challenges in global research in agriculture and technology. We have our honourable chief guest and keynote speaker for today, Professor R C Agrawal sir, who is the national director of N A H E P and D D G Education Agriculture I C A R New Delhi. I warmly welcome you, sir. we have our honorable principal of rbs college professor un singh sir sir is the principal of rbs college and former head of the department agriculture statistics and mathematics rbs college agra and campus in charge of bijpuri campus agra i warmly welcome you sir as well we have dr p k upadhyay who is the organizing chairperson of this international webinar as well as, as, well as, as dr upadhyay is the general dr. secretary upadhyay of upadhyay indian society of genetics biotechnology research and development of, 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 indian society of i would now request honorable principal of rbs college dr un singh sir to please deliver the welcome address to all our viewers I would now request on principle principle of R B S College. All of you.
हेलो एम आई आई बोल गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल व्यूअर्स अवर ऑनरेबल चीफ गेस्ट एच पी एंड डी डी जी एग्रीकल्चर एजुकेशन आई सी आर न्यू डेली गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर प्रोफेसर के बी प्रभु and yeah हेलो प्रोफेसर रिचर्ड साफरी सर फ्रॉम ऑस्ट्रेलिया प्रोफेसर आर्टर रेडेकर सर फ्रॉम फ्रांस प्रोफेसर राजेंद्र कुमार सर फ्रॉम न्यू दिल्ली एंड डॉक्टर अजय वीर सिंह सर फ्रॉम एन जे एल एम ए आगरा इट इज़ माय प्लेजर टू सी यू ऑल इन द इन दिस इंटरनेशनल वेबिनार ऑन चैलेंजेस इन ग्लोबल रिसर्च इन एग्रीकल्चर एंड टेक्नोलॉजी आई डॉक्टर यू एन सिंह प्रिंसिपल आर बी एस कॉलेज आगरा एंड द वेबिनार चेयरपर्सन एक्सटेंड माई वार वेलकम टू ऑल द इन्वाइटेड गेस्ट डेलीगेट्स हु आर ज्वाइनिंग अस एंड एड टू ज्वाइन अस ऑन दिस वर्चुअल प्लेटफॉर्म द प्लान ऑफ दिस वेबिनार वॉज एक्सिक्यूटेड इन अ वेरी लेस स्पेन ऑफ टाइम एंड द ऑर्गेनाइजर्स हैव वर्क वेरी हार्ड day and night to make it execute in such a nice manner for its grand success this webinar will continue for two days that is 30th 30th and 40th july 2021 in septing from 10 am onwards to 2 pm on both the days respectively it is also a privilege for rbs college agra and isgb rd to host you for these two days through this virtual mode rbs college agra that is raja balwan singh college the epitome of education is one of the oldest educational institute which got established in 1885 the college holds its own history from starting as an hostel of just 20 students to reaching as a college with potential for excellence rbs college was essentially known as balwant rajput college as a br college was founded and started by raja balwant singh sahab of avagad state eta up uttar pradesh who enabled the institution to grow as one of the oldest and biggest college of india RBS college formerly known as the BR college came into existence from its first milestone which was known as Rajput Boarding House for Education which later upgraded as Balwant Rajput High School in 1934 after the information of Balwant Educational Society the BRHS 
got popularly known as balwant rajput international college intermediate college as the first college in india to have faculties of arts commerce science and agriculture all together this educating wing got raised to ug and pg level through affiliation from dr bhim rao ambedkar university agra and rbs engineering technical campus and rbs management technical campus from dr apj abdul kalam technical university lucknow the college completed more than 80 years milestone and got a plus accreditation by nec in 2017 rbs college as of now has nine faculties that is of arts commerce science agriculture education engineering pharmacy management computer application and technology whereas the indian society of genetics biotechnology research and development india a world frame research society founded 16 years ago with the aim of working with scientists professors teachers and the students among the world ISGBRD is a prestigious registered society of practicing agriculturist geneticians biotechnologist molecular bio biologist and plant breeders from government public and private sectors with the students pursuing genetics biotechnology and biosciences disciplines has vital role to play the fostering the progress of agriculture genetics biotechnology and biosciences in the world isgbrd also publishes an international journals in titles as indian research journal of genetics and biotechnology and magazines entitled biswa krishi uthan biotech rainbow prakriti prerak and newsletter entitled jal for the welfare of students professors research scholars and all connected to science all the publication by isgbrd are well rated and indexed true to the letter and spirit of its objectives the society has been keeping itself abreast with the latest research in the area of agriculture genetics biotechnology and biosciences by encouraging active integration among its members through topical international and national conferences seminars symposia workshops and to the latest webinars to bring about awareness among its members and the public at large in the near past the society has also organized eight international conferences worldwide in india malaysia dubai and nepal two national conferences one national workshop and one international webinar in past years with gathering of more than 1000 delegates approximately and nearly 5000 delegates in our last international webinar from india and abroad the society also aims to work with full enthusiasm in the future and achieve milestone with your love and support with this i would like to conclude my words and wish luck to this international webinar and hope to see all the viewers enjoy the webinar on both the days Thank you very much and once again I welcome on the behalf of RBS college everyone thank you very much Thank you very much sir I would like to give you all a glimpse for today's topic of the webinar which is challenges in global research in agriculture and technology 
so makes us think about what all are the challenges in global research in the field of agriculture when we have got all modern practices and we are surrounded by technology from all over i personally came across a challenge in this field and it is one of the major challenges in all other science and technology that it can lead to a substantial environmental effect it causes pollution like the addition of toxins and other chemicals to the water and environment and due to these additions we are facing such pandemics like covid-19 and also guess that these pandemics like covid will be affecting in the near future as well as the sustainability of environment is hurting on the side and on the other side we are undergoing the adverse effect of technology using modern techniques in research works and here hit of several ill effects of environment are challenging us for the same hence this is a bit brief about the topic and all our invited guests will continue with it now i would like to hand over the mic to our keynote speaker and honorable chief guest professor rc agrawal sir to please continue with his talk and deliver the keynote address thank you uh, mr anshuman and thanks to uh, dr opin nath singh and dr pk upadhyay for uh, inviting me and for organizing such a important uh, webinar uh, i compliment uh, the indian society of genetics uh, biotechnology research and uh, development isgbrd also uh, for uh, having thought and having organized this uh, important webinar so uh, i am really uh, pleased that uh, the society is thinking in that direction and society is taking the lead uh, uh, for picking up the topics uh, of uh, importance the topics of uh, key relevance uh, for the national priorities so thank you very much uh, i would like to now share my uh, presentation uh, so there is a option of share here you can click on that and start your presentation uh, i am just clicking on share Okay. But but it is allowing only the uh, video is the, the entire screen entire screen sir please opt for entire screen um, not so are, are you able to see my screen Yes, sir. It will be shown when you uh, enter the entire screen. Uh, can you see now? No, sir. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Uh, let. Can you see it now, sir? It's you can not see visible. It? No, sir. No, but it is showing. You are uh, just confirm. No? no, sir. Not yet. You can email me. I'll share it from my place. Yes, but it is showing here. Can you see it now? No, sir. But it is showing me that you are sharing another application window. No, sir. I guess you have not entered the entire screen icon. Uh, uh, 
Sir, if possible, you may please stop. email. Ah, it is please asking me stop, stop screen. It is saying. So that means it is sharing. Sir, it's not being shared here. Entire screen. Now, can you see it now? No, sir. So you can email me. I'll share it from my place. That means there is some problem with this. Okay. Okay. Still not visible? Yes, sir, visible now. Land grant system of US. Yes. Now it's fine. So uh, thank you once again. Uh, friends, I'm going to speak about this importance of this agriculture. Sir, now education. we are ready. Uh, land, land grant system of the meters. Hello. Can you yes, sir. Can you we see can my slide, uh, first slide, implementation strategies? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, I am going to speak about the importance of agriculture education. And uh, what is uh, our implementation strategies for implementation of national education policy, which was declared during the year 2020. Uh, friends, uh, I am working presently as the Deputy Director General of Agriculture Education in Indian Council of Agriculture Research. I am directly responsible for uh, for the entire agriculture education in the country. And uh, especially, uh, as you know, the ICR has a uh, lot of responsibilities for uh, implementation of this agriculture education. And uh, for that, only I am going to speak today. So what are our challenges? What are our responsibilities? Uh, you, you see, uh, there is a difference between the traditional universities and the agricultural universities. And if you see the land, uh, the agricultural universities in India, they are developed. They have been uh, formulated based on the land grant system of the U United States. And the key function of the land grant system is that you cannot just make teaching different. You have to integrate teaching with research and extension. And that was the key uh, point for this land grant pattern. And uh, it was started from the US. And based on that, uh, the first university which was established in India was the uh, G.B. Pant University uh, during the 1960s. And uh, based on that uh, idea only, the subsequent universities have been established in India. And that is what we have to understand. Sometimes people just say that, let us ask all the agriculture universities to focus only on the teaching part. You cannot. You have to have uh, together the research and uh, the uh, extension also with this. Now, if you see uh, today in the pandemic, uh, sitting at home, uh, we had a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, food crisis, uh, a lot of uh, demand for the food, but there was no shortage of any, uh, any kind of food. We, we need not to import any kind of thing. How could it happen? This could happen because of our good agriculture education, because of the support of all the agriculture universities because of the support of the ICR, the research, uh, the strong research which we have developed, the strong uh, base for the plant varieties uh, which have been developed by our complete national agricultural research system and the, the research which has been done in other areas also like animals, uh, animal science, veterinary science, horticulture, every field you can see. And you can see the figures, how we have jumped uh, from the 1950 
just after independence to uh, 1718. Uh, you can see the food grains have jumped from 50 million tons to 284. And now this year it is more than 300 million tons. Similarly, you can see the pulses, oil seeds, cotton, sugar cane, uh, horticulture, eggs, eggs, even 47 times uh, there is an increase in the eggs. Milk, there is an, uh, uh, close to 10, 10 times increase in the milk production. So today we are the global best or second best for producer of many crops. And we are uh, the lead uh, in the green, white, blue and yellow revolutions. So we can see how this all could happen. This all could happen because of the agri strong agricultural education system in our country. And uh, you can see uh, the role of uh, education division of ICR. Uh, we have uh, to have the Uh, can you just hold on? Uh, so our uh, uh, our objective is to plan, promote, and coordinate agricultural education in the country to enhance the quality and relevance of higher agricultural education in the country and to strengthen the agricultural university system for developing quality human resource in agriculture and allied sciences. So that means we have to have these points uh, while coordinating the teaching, research and extension programs in all the 74 universities in India. And if you see the landscape of uh, agricultural education, we have 63 agricultural universities, state agricultural universities rather. Uh, we have four deemed universities. We have three central agricultural universities and we have four central universities with the agriculture faculty. So in total, we have around 74 uh, universities which are providing the agriculture education to about, uh, the, the intake is around 45,700 every year in UG, PG and PhD. And total, there are about two lakh students in all the universities at any uh, given point of time. Uh, we at the education division uh, at ICR, we do not uh, compromise with the, uh, with the quality. And uh, that is the reason why we have uh, linked the accreditation with the admissions. We have linked the accreditation uh, with the release of the grants. And for accreditation, we have a lot of quality parameters. Uh, we declared four-year UG programs as the professional degrees. Uh, we have uh, the dean's committees every 10 years. But now, uh, recently, we have again constituted a dean's committee for the implementation of this national education policy. We have the minimum standards for uh, higher agriculture education. Uh, we, have, uh, we have to keep our faculty always uh, up to date in the advanced uh, topics for which we have established 40 advanced faculty training centers in India. And uh, we have introduced the student ready program, the Rural Entrepreneurship uh, Awareness Development Yojana, for which every UG student has to go at least for six months for uh, this student ready program. So there are various components of the student ready program. I'll just discuss details. But uh, the, the point of concern is, what is the point of concern? That many universities have been bifurcated into a unity, uh, unity uh, uh, universities. Like I know in some states, one single university has been bifurcated into five universities. Uh, so uh, they have been converted into veterinary universities, horticulture universities, fisheries universities, uh, and uh, now the organic universities. So that is really a point of concern. And uh, we have to have some uh, control uh, on these bifurcations because the very purpose of university gets diluted. And under the national education policy, this has been, uh, this has been highly 
uh, emphasize that we should not have the unity uh, unity education uh, system or unity universities in this and uh, if you see uh, the uh, the role of uh, our education division at icr uh, we are responsible for development of a model act which is adopted uh, by all the states while formulating their state acts for establishment of any state agricultural university and the latest one we developed during 2020 but now it has to be revised in in view of the uh, nep implementation so i was talking about the student ready program and if you see the student ready program uh, it has uh, four components uh, the student projects in plan training experience learning rave uh, and that really makes our students uh ready for any entrepreneurship they can be linked for any uh, projects they can be uh, linked for uh, the in plant training and they can be uh, deputed to the villages and we have around 480 experience learning units on in the business mode while uh, learning they can also uh, do the earning also so uh, that is the motto of this experience learning and we are uh, funding now more and more uh, for establishment of the incubation centers uh, in this current efc uh, we have made it sure that now we will not fund for the uh, buildings we will not fund for the infrastructure but we will just emphasize for the establishment of the incubation centers uh, so that we ensure that our students are job providers and not the job seekers and that uh, for that only we are working we have signed mou with the food and agriculture organization of the united nations to take our students for the intensive uh, who can be deputed to any anywhere in the world then uh, we have uh, recently uh, spoken to uh, international rice institute we have spoken to national seed corporation uh, we are uh, doing with many universities across the world and now recently uh, i spoke to the president of uh, uh, i uh, this association of indian universities aiu and uh, we want to have the visits of the students from the traditional universities to the agricultural universities so that there can be a cross learning between both so they can also take up the agriculture uh, projects they can also uh, make innovative ideas uh, for engineering for biotech for any any science in the uh, agricultural universities uh, from the iits from the from the other uh, well established traditional universities so that we are going to start so ultimately uh, under the student ready program uh, we are uh, providing a rural entrepreneurship and the practical experience and that is really helping there are a lot of success stories for this and uh, under uh, this student ready program we have uh, the objectives for achieving uh, this entrepreneurship problem solving self employment rural exposure skill development and so and so forth. it's a very uh, it's a flexible program i can say and now the uh, i'm uh, happy to share with all of you that uh, we are attracting talent to the agriculture education now many students are coming by choice to the agriculture not Uh, by rejection so that means uh, they prefer to go for the agriculture and they prepare for the agriculture examination and then they try that they should get some good esteem in the agriculture education you can see the figures from 16 17 to now uh, in uh, in ug programs there is an increase of around 58% applicants uh, pg program there is an increase of uh, 12 uh, 13% increase and in phd there is an increase of around 200 percent and uh, that uh, that is really uh, helping us uh, assessment of faculty performance effectiveness also recently we got it examined and uh, you can see how our uh, universities are really performing through this h index score you can see the top 10 uh, aus so uh, some of the institutes uh, some of the universities they have even more than uh, 90 Um, uh, this h index 
so iara it is 125 mpu 893 ccs uh, hausr 82 like that you can see the figures and similarly we got examine the top 10 agricultural universities with the highest internal revenue generation uh, now uh, i am happy to share with you that there are universities like tamil nadu agricultural university which have a revenue generation of around 125 crores and uh, all these top 10 universities which i have shown they are the universities which have uh, their revenue more than 40 crores and that's what now we are promoting that why uh, the universities agricultural universities cannot become self dependent self reliant so let them generate their own revenue so that uh, they have more transparency more efficiency in their uh, academic uh, activities and uh, that's what uh, we we could collect and we are uh, saying uh, with proud that our university are coming forward for this revenue generation uh, similarly if you see the distribution landscape of students uh, you can see uh, the student strength at the agricultural universities uh, under this state agricultural universities cai or deemed universities that how the different uh, kind of uh, categories like ug pg and phd they are distributed uh the institutional uh, now if you see uh, the uh, the national education policy which was uh, announced last year uh, i am the member secretary for uh, making the draft road map and uh, already we have developed the road map and i have presented before on level again to the minister and very soon it is going to be out uh, under that we have uh, proposed many things and the first and foremost thing which we have presented uh, there is that we should now stop fragmentation of the universities so that means no more university dealing with the uh, with the horticulture no more university dealing with the uh, dealing with the say uh, fisheries so you can uh, have addition of the colleges and that's what now we are uh, providing uh, we are trying to uh, propagate And similarly we have uh, as you know we have four deemed universities iara ibra ndra and sifa mumbai so they are in different domains fisheries uh, dairy uh, veterinary agriculture and now we are trying to make them multidisciplinary uh, and research intensive because one of the category under the national education policy is uh, the research intensive university and for that we are trying to have more and more disciplines being added in this uh, deemed universities uh, you also know that uh, the deemed world uh, will go now there will not be any deemed university all the universities will have the name only the universities no deemed universities so that also we are uh, planning how best we can do all those things uh, ug programs uh, we are uh, trying to uh, make Uh, many changes in the ug programs and uh, this multiple exit and multiple uh, entry system uh, uh, already we have constituted a committee to just suggest us how we can have this one year certificate course two year diploma how if, if, if a person exits after one year uh, how we can adjust the uh, entrepreneurship the student ready program and many more things we can add into this and similarly for masters program we are making uh, many changes and uh, we are allowing uh, the students uh, for the teaching assistantship so the students uh, can take the uh, teaching assistantship uh, they can undergo even at the pg level for the intensive for development of entrepreneurship in agriculture uh, we call it as idea uh, and one of the guide in the advisory board Uh, can be from the industry side also so that we take uh, the uh, the real time problems for the research so that's what uh, and 20% of the credits in the semester system can be through the online learning platform and for that we are uh, we are going to have lot of uh, e resources now we have already launched a kashi make a cloud computing system uh the the incorporation of the artificial intelligence virtual reality many things now we have added which will really boost the learning through this online platform and especially uh during the time of pandemic 
this can be a boon for uh, all this. Uh, recent development is also that we formulated a committee uh, of BSMA, the Broad Subject Matter Area Committee, uh, for the uh, for total revamp of MSc and PhD course curriculum and the guidelines, the less uh, coursework, and many changes we have made based on the practices being followed uh, across the globe. And that's what now we are trying to incorporate in this. Uh, so those BSMA recommendations also have been now uh, now adopted and from the next academic year, uh, we will uh, have its implementation in all the universities. And similarly, for online and digital education, we have uh, incorporated in many universities under the World Bank project, which also I am heading uh, for virtual reality, artificial intelligence and many things. And now we are also trying to have more and more courses for Swayam Diksha, uh, Swayam Prabha platforms in, uh, in the fields related to the agriculture. Because presently you see all, in all these platforms, you don't have many course contents related to the agriculture. So that's where now we are planning. And uh, we also have a massive drive uh, for conversion of all the courses of uh, PG and PhD and UG uh, in the e-contents mode. We have uh, funded uh, many universities. We have hired many persons who are developing these courses. And to develop the multimedia contents, we have hired uh, a firm. Uh, you know, ENY is working on the contents creation for this. And similarly, uh, we recently launched the virtual classroom and agri Diksha platform. Uh, the agri Diksha platform uh, is uh, very important where any lecturer can record his lecture and immediately through this platform it can be released and uh, the contents can be modified, multimedia can be added into this. So it's a very good facility, we got it inaugurated uh, through our uh, agriculture minister. And uh, uh, in addition to this, a lot of other things we have incorporated for this uh, e -learning. And for internalization, we are making a boost for internalization. We are asking all universities to have a separate office, an international office, uh, where the queries of the international students can be, uh, can be answered at any point of time, uh, so that we attract the students from all the countries to India. And for that, uh, we are going to develop the guidelines. Uh, what are the... Uh, what are the areas in which we are lacking the international standards uh, so that we come under the QS ranking? And uh, to begin with, we have taken a case of IARA to convert into the global university. They require a fund of around 2,000 crores, which we are trying to uh, make them available uh, so that ultimately we can say with proud that we are the Vishwa Guru. India is the Vishwa Guru in the world. Uh, we have uh, taken some uh, timelines uh, like uh, uh, during this current year, 21-22, we will have this multiple exit entry system. Uh, we are now relaxing the requirement of the residential uh, requirement, uh, which was must for all the UG, PG, PhD programs and universities, but now they can stay outside uh, the hostels also because we have to increase the gross enrollment ratio. And for that, we have asked the universities to increase at least 10% seats starting from uh, this year, uh, so that uh, more uh, students can be accommodated. Uh, we are uh, asking universities to adopt the common entrance exam of ICR for admissions in all the state agricultural universities. So that also uh, we are trying to develop. We have asked the universities to develop their institutional development plans. Uh, and uh, using this IDP, uh, they can really uh, identify their core strength and can uh, ask for the funding from the Ministry of Education uh, in that core area of uh, their competence uh, so that uh, <clears throat> that university can be identified that, okay, for this particular area, this university is the, is the key player. And uh, the Dean's Committee already, as I told you, we have, uh, we have already uh, notified. And, uh, very soon we are going to work on this. Uh, the agriculture universities have to organically evolve 
into multidisciplinary institutions, not by force. So that's also now uh, we have uh, made the guidelines how they will uh, evolve into this. And uh, uh, the vocational education also we are uh, trying to incorporate in all the universities so that uh, more and more entrepreneurs can be developed through our uh, education system. Uh, as I told you, we are having a lot of revenue being generated uh, through these agriculture universities. So we are uh, saying that by 2035, they all should become the independent and self-governing institutions uh, without asking any money from the government uh, for uh, their smooth running. The board of governors have to be established by 2035. And our aim is that all agricultural education institutes should uh, should aim to become multidisciplinary institutions by 2040. So that means no university will be called as agricultural university, no university will be called as horticultural university. All the universities will be general universities and they will have every kind of discipline in their universities. If it is not available, then they can go for uh, Academic Bank of Credit, uh, ABC. And uh, through that also, they can uh, they, any student can learn from any other university and can uh, really uh, get that incorporated into his transcript and uh, can learn whatever he wants. There will not be any term like uh, extracurricular activities Everything will be part of your curriculum. If I am a student of genetics plant breeding, I can opt additional subjects uh, of, say, uh, sports. I can have painting, I can have music, anything I can have, and that also will be reflected in my uh, transcript. Uh, recently, uh, I have issued a circular to all the universities that even NCC uh, can uh, be made and we have uh, circulated the detailed course curriculum for the NCC also in all the universities as part of this uh, national education policy. And uh, it can be a, a elective subject. So a lot of changes now we are uh, trying to make with this system. And for IT system, we have made a very uh, strong base now. We have uh, everything online. Almost the education system is 100% paperless office. We have the accreditation online. We have the uh, academic management system, which we have uh, loaded into 54 universities. And our plan is uh, that very soon we will implement in all the universities. We have uh, the Kritagya portal, a hackathon, which we uh, do regularly. Uh, we have uh, the ranking system also uh, through this online system. We have a alumni network. All the universities have a common platform where the alumni can be registered. So that is, again, a very important system. Uh, and recently, we have launched the system of uh, experts. Uh, so if you want to uh, know about any expert, you want to search that you want to have uh, an expert for this particular subject, for YYOC, for your any committee, you can just log into this system and you can know that who are the experts available in that particular subject. And similarly, we have the project information management system, virtual classrooms, and one of the very good infrastructure which we could develop is the CRASI Make, uh, the cloud computing system, and it is a data recovery center uh, also, uh, where we have incorporated a lot of things related to the AI, GI, uh, AI virtual reality, and uh, other kind of things. So uh, that was in brief, uh, I wanted to just uh, tell you um, we can be reached uh, our portal uh, education.icr.gov.in, um, but uh, you can also link through this uh, www.icr.gov.in. And thank you very much for your patience uh, hearing and for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir.
very wonderful and great uh, conversation and uh, lot of thanks sir Dr. Bade? Is it done, sir? Yes, it is done. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, I invite any questions if we have. If we have any questions. If we have any questions, uh, they are invited. Okay, sir. I guess there are no more questions. Uh, okay, so uh, just a minute, sir. Let me check. A few questions are there. Just a second, sir. Please give me a minute, sir. Uh, a few questions are hitting us. I'll just check and let you know the questions. Uh, so there's a question for us, uh, and it is that uh, uh, this Dr. Bridesh uh, Kumar Chaturvedi has asked, uh, government should increase budget for higher agriculture education in, in India, uh, but there is no response being added in agriculture education. So what plans are there for such uh, uh, budgets for higher education of agriculture in India? Um. You want uh, more budget for the agriculture education? Yes, sir. There, uh, he's asking that uh, uh, we should add more budget to agriculture education, but government of India is not focusing uh, to put agriculture education in a budget list. So, uh, what are the plans for that? No, that is not the case. Uh, I think more budget is being given uh, through various channels, and uh, but this is not. Free. This is uh, based on the competition, like the World Bank project which I am heading. We have around 1100 crores, but it is nothing like you give a grant to all the universities. You have to compete, you have to write your project, uh, which many universities they fail uh, to write a quality uh, project proposal. 
and uh, similarly from education division recently uh, i have proposed a budget of around 2200 crores uh, which uh, i'm sure i am going to get and we are providing but universities want more and more budget for creating the infrastructure every day hostel every day the the, the other kind of facilities but let us have more uh, facilities for the entrepreneurship more facilities for the training purpose so uh, i i think a lot of budget uh, is being provided uh, but uh, we have to at the same time also focus that we uh, we have uh, sufficient uh, facilities for the uh, for the revenue generation thank you so the next question is uh, the all india entrance examination for agriculture is being delayed because of this covid 19 effect and this would definitely affect the agriculture education system what steps are being taken for this uh yes uh, the entire world is affected because of this uh, pandemic and we are also affected but this time we will, we are planning to have it in the end of uh, august or in the beginning of uh, september uh, and accordingly we adjust uh, the different uh, semesters so there is a effect uh, i can say uh, effect uh, you can see uh, on every kind of education even the 12th uh, 12th exam result the uh, uh, this uh, jwe so everything is linked so we cannot uh, i cannot have my exam prior to the other exams so if, if students want to first appear for the entrance exam in the engineering then medical then they want to have this uh, uh, this uh, uh, agriculture so uh, our plan is that we accordingly instruct the universities Uh, to have their uh, complete uh, program uh, based on uh, the revised uh, time schedule and accordingly they adjust their all practical exposure many things a detailed guideline we have issued thank you more question is coming what all steps should be taken in research works if we are not having any personalized laboratories in our institute uh i think uh, for that what now we are planning is that uh, for pg and phd the research is really required and uh, the the projects should be taken only in those areas where the university has the facility now if there is no biotech lab in a, in a university and you take the biotech research uh, so suddenly then uh, your proper guide guidance also will not be there but uh, you can have the option now uh, you can collaborate with other universities you can have the facilities of the other universities uh, for doing your research work wherever you find uh, you you don't have the proper uh, uh, proper facilities in your own university so that uh, arrangements we are trying to make for the inter uh, university uh student exchange or uh, the, the other kind of uh, uh exchange programs any other question wave of covid-19 pandemic how is government going about research like it's the same sort of question yeah as i told you uh, in the pandemic we made it detailed guidelines like uh, the students were allowed uh, to reach to the nearest kvk for doing their research work because uh, you you cannot ask the student to travel a long distance from their hometown to the university so we instructed all the kvks they should provide all kind of support uh, to the students if they are visiting their kvks and uh, just certainly it is it has, you cannot have the same kind of output you cannot have the same kind of quality which is available in the normal time but it was a stop gap arrangement and it was a arrangement uh, so that the students 
uh, academic year is not uh, uh, compromised. Thank you. Yes, sir. One more question is with us. Uh, why ICR accreditation of colleges are important to join ICR college through JRF and SRF test while we are giving them? Yeah, I was expecting this question. So very important question. Uh, in fact, first thing, let me make it clear that we are controlling through ICR exam only the 15% of the seats in the UG and 25% seats in the a PG and PhD. The rest of these seats are not governed by this accreditation, are not governed by the ICR rules. That is the first thing you have to understand. Second thing we have to understand is that we are doing this particular thing to stop the inbreeding. If we do not have our quota in the universities, then all the 100% students will be, have, will be admitted only from the same state. Now, uh, that will not really help the universities. You cannot have, the students cannot have the cross-cultural uh, learning. They cannot have uh, the mix-up with the other students from other states, many kind of things. So for having this 15% and 25% in UG, PG, PhD, uh, we have to have some kind of quality control. And for that quality control, we have to see that the basic facilities are available in the universities. Like if, if I suppose uh, we just uh, remove this accreditation. Now I can tell you there are universities which do not have even 25% of the staff positions filled up. They don't have. And if I ask the best student that, okay, you go and take admission in this university. I, I cannot uh, guide uh, any student to go. So they, they are not filling the position. They don't have the proper laboratories. I admit a student, say, for biotech in a university which doesn't have the bio, They have the faculty for biotech, but they don't have the uh, uh, biotech uh, laboratory. Now, can I uh, ask a student that you uh, take admission in this and do the world-class research in this university? So we say, no, you have to be first accredited. Accreditation means you have to have certain minimum standards which are required. I can tell you there are many universities, uh, private universities, which do not have the land. Uh, so we, we do not provide the accreditation. And then they say they will do the agronomy, they will do uh, this uh, uh, seed production, they will do uh, other kind of things. Can you do seed production in the building? You cannot do. So minimum, and they have the land which is 100 kilometers away. Really, can you travel 100 kilometers uh, from the classroom to go to the field? You cannot. So there are many minimum standards which are required. Now, because of this pressure, universities are coming, they are fighting with the state government, they are filling their positions, they are acquiring the land, they are uh, establishing the laboratories, they are having the minimum requirements which have to be there for this. We, we are having a lot of pressure from the veterinary universities. We should remove this. Now, I know many veterinary universities which do not have the basic facilities. So, it's not compromise uh, with the quality and then say with proud that I am an agriculture product, product uh, having no knowledge because there was no facility available in my university. So, but uh, you are always free to compete for non-accredited universities. We don't have any control. We, we have this accreditation requirement only for these, our quota 15% and 25%. Yes, sir. Uh, one more question is being added to this question only. And it is why ICR aggregate is necessary. No, can you repeat? I, I could not get. Please repeat your question. Yes, sir. Sir, it is why ICR accreditation. Yes, sir. Why ICR accreditation is necessary when we already have NAC accreditation with us? No. Uh, we deal with the, the requirement uh, which are required for the agriculture education. Uh, like uh, the NAC accreditation will never uh, have all these uh, standards uh, like your land requirement, uh, your different uh, dean's committee's recommendations, your BSMA recommendations. 
uh, your uniform nomenclature, which we just uh, ask. Okay, like recently uh, in uh, in very good university, which are one of the top most universities. Okay, uh, their programs they were not according to the syllabus, which is uniform syllabus from the ICR. Okay. So, does the NEC uh, will look into all those things which the ICR has uh, formulated? Never. Thank you. Yes, sir. Oh, why, uh, why are institutes are not pursuing workshop or internship courses for agriculture graduate students in their specialized No, your voice is not clear. It, it is breaking. Yes, sir. So I'll repeat the question. Why are institute are not pursuing workshops or internship courses for agriculture graduates in their special subjects while they are in UG programs? No, as far as I know, our agriculture university, they are conducting uh, uh, such internship programs. And now we are even making guidelines that the students can be exchanged between the universities for this internship. And personally, I am looking into this uh, for uh, internship uh, in various uh, industries. Uh, like I told you, National Seed Corporation, uh, the, uh, the pesticide industry, uh, the fertilizer industry, and many such industries we are just looking into that how our students our students are going to Amul, our students are going to Paleji, our students are going to many industries uh, for internship. Uh, and universities also have been asked that they, they should conduct this internship program and they should do this uh, student action programs. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, here, one more question. Sir, please suggest what are the scopes in genetics and plant breeding in future if we have done our masters in this specialized subject? Uh, I think uh, the the scope depends upon the interest of the student. If the student want uh, to become an entrepreneur, uh, I think that is the best option. You can go for your own seed production. You can go for um, uh, your own uh, complete uh, independent entrepreneur. Uh, but you can go for the research. You can go for uh, uh, the, the the other uh, government departments. You can go for higher studies for uh, to foreign. Uh, genetics plant breeding is wonderful subject and uh, it is the base basic subject. I think the students can be accommodated in biotech, can be accommodated in other sciences, and they have the basic knowledge. Uh, so uh, it is up to the student that where he wants. But all avenues are open. Uh, the government job, the research work, his own entrepreneur, the higher studies, or uh, getting the job uh, in any foreign university. So there are many scopes. Uh, yes, sir. One more uh, message is there. KVK scientists and assistant professors are not equivalent in several universities due to difference in grade pay. That is 5406,000. Is there any alternative of this and why is it being so? Uh, no, that is not my area of domain because I cannot comment on this. Maybe our Deputy Director General Extension can comment on this. So I am sorry for this. Uh, sir, government colleges are not accredited to ICR. Why? No, no, no. That is totally incorrect. Any, we even uh, provide accreditation uh, to uh, private to government. There are many government colleges which are accredited. Who says that it is? They are not accredited. They have to apply, and they have to have those minimum facilities which are required as per our norms. So we provide accreditation uh, without any difference uh, differentiation. Sir, yeah. uh, so one more question is with us: uh, Is library strengthening fund for aided non-ICR accredited but NAC accreditation colleges? I didn't get the question well. Uh, no, I, I get this question. No, we will not, because there is a cabinet decision uh, by the government of India 
that if a university or a program is non accredited we will not provide any any kind of support whether it's a library strengthening or any any other kind of infrastructure creation so our funding can be only for the accredited universities okay sir sir uh, there is one question from there is one question from sir i am doing my masters in horticulture pomology at dr r p c a u sir i want to know about the career prospectus and job opportunities in abroad okay no you can uh, always uh, go abroad there is there, there are certain exams which you have to qualify and uh, for career prospects uh, i think you can uh, write uh, the ars exam you can write uh, the other bank exams uh you can uh, write the civil services so there are many things it depends upon your interest uh and your competence uh, and you can have your own uh, business nowadays uh, in horticulture especially i see lot of isco people are going for uh, their own nursery going for many kind of things so i will just suggest and uh, will encourage if you go for your own uh your own business and uh, try to uh, give opportunity employment opportunity to others uh, which grants are there in icr for strengthening aided agri multi faculty colleges uh, could not get it for strengthening aided agri multi faculty colleges Uh, i i don't think we have any grant for uh, such thing there is no grant no this question is not clear at all what is it accredited with icr i guess it's accredited is university under accredited with icr is it permitted to join students no join their programs okay. like what sorry. for non icr so, university uh, sorry yes, there is no no restriction sorry. there is no uh, restriction for joining of workshops or any other things accreditation is not required for them Okay. Uh, now we are done with the questions. Okay, uh, one more questions. Can you suggest some universities for agriculture in abroad? There are many. Not one. You can go to the Michigan State University. You can go to the Washington State University. There are more than a hundred universities. Uh, you can get a list from the internet. Everything is available on the Google. Uh, but Michigan State, this. Uh, Uh, Michigan State University uh, is one of the good university, but the best university across the world is the uh, Wageningen University in Netherlands. That is the top ranked university, but one of the oldest universities is Michigan State University. But uh, there are more than hundred universities where you can really try to get admission. Okay, Prabhu, sir. Namaskar. We have our honourable uh, chief guest and uh, special, a very special person for me as well, uh, Professor K V Prabhu sir. Sir is the chairperson of PPV and FRA Government of India in New Delhi. We warmly welcome you, sir. Uh, sir, I am extremely happy to see you. It got very difficult to contact you as you were a bit busy, and uh, I am sorry we could not have informed you earlier. Uh, as we sent you a mail, but we were unable to connect you, uh, sir. I would request you to please speak a few words to our audience. They are eager to hear you. I, I should know the background a little bit. Uh, if I introduce a little bit about the purpose and uh, who are the audience. Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, you are not audible. Uh, sir, I am not audible. No, I am not muted. Not audible at all. You are now audible. You are audible now. You are audible now. Okay. 
No, I, I would like to know the background a little bit and who is the audience. Uh, accordingly, sir, Aman can speak. Sir, we have students, professors, and uh, research scholars, PhD scholars from all over India. And the topic for today's webinar is challenges in global research in agriculture and technology. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, our honorable principal of RBS College, uh, Professor Yuen Singh, sir. We have DDG mm -hmm. Education, Professor R.C. Agrawal, sir, with us. And all audience have joined us on YouTube. Yeah, thank you. Dr. P.K. Bale, sir, is also with us. Yeah, I can see. <laughs> thank you. Uh, now, we have DDG Education sitting there, and uh, he should have uh, really given you the whole picture of what national uh, agriculture research scenario from the academic point of view and the challenges therein, he would have clearly mentioned. Uh, I hope you have done that, Rakesh, or you are still to address? I, I made you... my presentation uh, okay. about one hour, one hour already. Oh, okay, 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 good. So, and yeah. uh, answered more, more than 30 questions of his hmm. students. Okay. So I could respond to their questions also. Okay, very nice. Then let me uh, take this opportunity uh, on the topic point. Uh, friends, uh, it's a great uh, point to know that uh, you, we have people uh, who are from the students uh, community, researchers community, and also possibly some faculty uh, who are dealing with agriculture per se. Uh, in India, I must tell you, uh, the challenge itself is in accepting agriculture as a high order, high priority research area in the country. Unlike the seeming ground value it has, which does not make feel uh, make you feel that you're working in high tech uh, system or a sophisticated research system uh, of uh, all enclosures in air conditioning uh, uh, systems and uh, the, the uh, say the cleanliness and uh, compactness of a laboratory and things of this kind are not necessarily the part of agriculture research scenario in general. <clears throat> Other than people who are working in uh, some molecular biology area or uh, plant genetics area or cytogenetics area uh, or microbiology area. To an extent, plant pathology area who are dealing with the pathogen per se in research on that. Other than that, every other field is definitely more high tech than any of these high sounding uh, environmental systems are concerned but will be not as good looking uh, or as uh, well organized laboratory systems like you have it in these fields so that's one acknowledgement you should have to accept that you may not be viewed at as a great scientist if you're not working in any of those laboratory set up with a apron on or a, a say overall on or a glove set and a mask on your face, etc. Uh, not the pandemic related mask, but for uh, uh, safety as hazard free mask, which we use in molecular biology uh, on and off. So it is even if you're not wearing them, you will be doing very high tech research when you're dealing with soil, when you're dealing with environment, when you're dealing with host pathogen interaction with the host expression, phenotyping. Phenotyping is though major point, whether it is related to crops or uh, uh, tree plants or even microbial interaction on host systems. These are all high-tech research areas. So uh, the challenge itself is, why, why I said, is to acknowledge that you are in as high-tech as somebody working on the latest cloud engineering based uh, uh, interaction system development or data uh, height, uh, say, uh, uh, data analysis systems of large data analysis, uh, big data analysis or things like this, or uh, in Internet of Things related work, which you may be working on, or even working for a development of new uh, antibody-based uh, vaccine, vaccine development system, which is popular in public parlance today. And therefore, the one who is working in that area is high priority researcher. So this ground basing of agriculture as a field has to be accepted uh, because in, in a society, uh, unfortunately, when you say in India, when you say that uh, you're working in agriculture, uh, if uh, there, there's a community with uh, lots of doctors, a lot of engineers and software people around here, around there in that group, uh, they may not look at you twice first. 
it takes time to realize that all of them are standing up and all of them are able to think of newer things only because the bellies are full and the belly is full is happening because of high order agriculture research minus that there would have been nothing of this kind and there is no other field as comparable including it sector let me tell you friends where agricultural researchers have rubbed shoulder to shoulder to any global agriculture research system okay that's the reason despite the uh, extraordinarily environmental cosmopolitanism in indian agriculture in terms of the variation which is sub temperate to sub tropical to extra tropical to terrestrial which we have in india all in one go meaning thereby if it is flooding in one region as we are now seeing there is total drought in another region at the same time on the same crop that's the kind of diversity we have in india which no other country faces despite that we are able to feed the belly we are able to break record each year since last 11 years each year except one year in between we have been able to break the record of the previous productivity and production so that is only because we have been able to deal with the challenges of agriculture per se and overcome those challenges with our research which is applied to soils applied to environment applied to tendering the crops tending the crops and applying to husbandry of crops this is where uh, the challenge is in accepting that we are not inferior to any others we are not doing any low grade research compared to any other high order high society recognized research we have the answers to problems we have detection of problem as a major area once that is done the answers are there that's a great point in agriculture that's how we are able to solve if you know that the global temperatures are rising we are prioritizing to see the response of crop plants is changed by enzyme system modification or the reception of the uh, resources required for the plant to be as active as it was in its metabolic activity and the catabolism is not hurting the crops metabolic energy development energy resource conservation things of this kind cannot be under any kind of low grade research and they have to be with updating in the physiological concepts and the biochemistry of the plant between tissue movement between cell movement and organ movement within the plant system so these are the kinds of plant based agriculture system and now that the uh, overall agriculture scenario which includes uh, life in uh, water animal life on uh, the te uh, the terrain like the uh, animal uh, such as uh, uh, cattle or uh, goats or camels or rabbits or any of those which are farm based energy systems poultry any of this the products of these and the products of plants and the waste products of each of these can be integrated today in high order field uh, system research or farm system research this has to be given the priority today which is not being done with all the university systems if the university academicians are working here now ddg crops is here uh, sorry ddg education is here my earnest request to him i just had a meeting with the honorable minister uh, i reiterated uh, uh, the same uh, on some of the context but then i reiterated the point of having to integrate all these three for the benefit of students to be able to face the challenge otherwise the challenge is not going to be isolated the challenge is no more going to be only plant system based only animal system based or only poultry system based or only fresh water pond base or uh, brackish water pond base or uh, say ocean base or sea based marine water based it is not going to be that they are all going to be integrated even the marine water fisheries has to have its processing based linkage with its own waste products which is to be used in the cropping system there in the coastal area so there is nothing that is isolated as a, as on today so therefore separating why as a dd education is separating the organizations into horticulture university into fisheries university into animal science university into crop science university has been the most detrimental step we have taken adopted for whatever reason if anybody brings it back as in the new education system where they i think they are going 2030 as the uh, deadline when the integration has to happen 
some i think some year has been given if we can do it earlier than that the better it is because the faculty which is now in working in uh, capsules of their own arena are going to be losing their touch to connect to the ramifications of their outputs into inputs as into other capsules or vice versa they are not connected at all at this moment so take another 10 years which is what the 2030 is 2030 the border rakesh when we have to integrate yes and uh, that is the key point which you are suggesting which we have uh, now uh, informed the chief secretary that uh, no more further bifurcations of the existing universities and rather yeah. there should be uh, uh, there should be unification of the yes. universities so the, the the say, each, don't wait for the 10 years because the faculty will not be there see it, it universities cannot merge by physical merging of the fa- uh, say buildings it is the people who are to join and if the people are separated and the students who are going to join as assistant professors or uh, scientists researchers in 10 years to come if they have no exposure during their training into the in- integration they will not be able to make the best uh, out of the integration that now they will be allowed to after 10 years so therefore uh, from education system you have to start the joint courses and make essential credits to be taken from these parallel disciplines uh, in all one go now in bsc ag for example or bsc horticulture bsc fisheries and bsc animal husbandry or bvsc for that matter please connect them with minimum credit system with the other existing university till the merging happens otherwise uh, the faculty will not be trained enough rakesh they they cannot uh, uh, see be made to sit on a plank with no training for that it is just like uh, making you sit on a driver seat without you understanding which is clutch which is brake and what is going to be the pedal for acceleration so it is not going to work so that has to be seen and that can be seen now because you don't need any other legal system to facilitate the physical infrastructure merging let the uh, let the merging happen when it has to happen but the existing systems have to have at least academia uh, to be playing their roles together by having mutually shared minor credits or whatever be the minimum credits be there essentially like when we studied bsc agriculture animal husbandry poultry uh, uh, animal diseases were essential uh, parts in our bsc agriculture scenario uh, and engineering okay it was the essential part now that the universities are separated departments are not there in those universities even in iri we had a fantastic uh, uh, dairy and poultry here that had to be moved to ndri and uh, other places once this uh, bifurcation happened so this is not going to be uh, productive uh, in terms of enabling this great challenge agriculture uh, poses because agriculture is not going to be isolated challenge obviously in order to make uh, agriculture a livelihood not just for subsistence and sustenance but for profiteering business which is what the mode has to be otherwise youth will not be attracted so therefore to connect all these essential features the first thing and the only thing that can work is integrating in your bsc curriculum undergraduate curriculum these parallel disciplines as essential how you do it as a dd education i'm sorry to be addressing you directly but you are the key person and icr is the key organization there is the most important key organization to do it on a legal ground because higher education and professional education is in its under its umbrella so you being part of that system please see that we make it essential between these separated bifurcated universities for course curriculum at undergraduate level let the courses have minimum credits to be shared among so that the connectivity will be there and that is how the challenge can be understood i said answers are there but problems have to be understood to understand the problems which is the greatest challenge you have to have this comprehension of this multiple uh, variation that is happening so do that the great achievement i, I told honorable minister the same thing anyone who does this will have planned for safe future india for the next 100 years to go with the same population build up 
with or without population policy, we will be able to meet the requirement. Otherwise, whatever you do, environmental pressures of changing climate are going to put a threshold limit beyond which these bifurcated systems cannot contribute to solve the problems of the farmers. So that is uh, what I think will be the greatest contribution that ICR can do as a central body before bifurcation into Indian Council of Animal Research happens, if it happens, which may happen, then it is going to be more disastrous than what I'm saying. So before that happens, before 2030 comes in, please see that it's already on the annual and students who take out uh, uh, come out of the universities as graduates are not uh, say ignorant of the requirements of the other disciplines by having basic understanding that's what I meant by having minimum credit system Okay, so that's what I think uh, I thought I must tell you in terms of the challenge faced in agriculture thank you for giving me this opportunity and uh, although uh, it may be sketchy because I was not prepared uh, for whatever you wanted me to say and I hope I have lived up to your expectation of uh, meeting uh, the requirements of students. And uh, I'm most willing to answer any query the students may ask, want to ask, or uh, even others who may want me to elaborate on what I meant if they want to. I'll be free to explain. Sir, Thank you. The person, uh, there's a person, Suvrajit Patra, and he is asking, Sir, what is the main difference between plant breeding and plant biotechnology? Okay. See, uh, plant breeding is a larger science. Plant biotechnology is a small tool, very small tool in that science. Although it may appear to be, uh, uh, as, as I said, uh, as it be began today, because you'll be wearing a pair of gloves and uh, having a mask and uh, maybe even you'll be having uh, uh, your eyes covered when you're isolating RNA and then uh, trying to uh, uh, clone a, a gene product or expressing gene region into an E. coli uh, culture and then uh, moving it into a plant system. So you'll be, you think you may be doing great uh, science part of it, but this is a very small role that will add to the plant breeding repertoire of adding a new trait, which is non-existent in a genome or existent in a low expression level, whose expression you can increase or whose presence you can bring in into a new genome. Up to that only uh, plant biotechnology can do. Now that transferred genome, Will it be able to have the productivity with the expression of the trait? Or what is the kind of uh, the uh, breeding system you have to bring into that in order to make it have the same lifespan of 140 days, which is to have earlier before the transformation happen? Things of this kind are plant breeding research. So it's only one small tool to enhance the visibility of uh, facing the uh, say problem solution systems through plant variety development. That's what plant breeding is. Sir, uh, one question is coming from Miss Pooja Singh. She's asking, can I get internship training in your institution that is PPV and FRA? No. This is a regulatory organiz organization uh, where there is very, very high order of uh, uh, confidentiality because it is about intellectual property claim of one against the other. So therefore, there's no question of uh, uh, people who are on a fluid system moving in and out, who will be uh, dealing with uh, the uh, materials and applications and uh, data, uh, which is very detrimental for the confidentiality system. However, uh, we can organize uh, training programs for uh, outsiders without being part of the application system, which the internship will be entitled into. But to understand what are the requirements for protection of plant varieties, how it can be affected, what is the methodology adopted, how that is done, things of this kind, that we can organize uh, as a training program, but not on a basis of uh, internship, is on this basis. Rakesh can add because he, he, has, he is more experienced than I am in uh, handling PPA. Yes, sir. Uh, one, you, you have... one question oh, is coming over there for him. Uh, yeah, one cannot uh, be part of all those confidential documents. It's perfect. Sir. Yeah. 
please uh, sir me. one question is for you uh, dr agrawal one question is for you uh, can i get internship training in seed production technology from icr particularly no that uh, internship uh, per se not from icr you can uh, write to our institutes like uh, there is a directed of bt search which is now converted into the institute uh, they are uh, for sorghum there is a institute of um, uh, millet research so there are some institutes you can uh, write to them and uh, the, the, absolutely there is no problem uh, for not getting the internship it can be done but universities are better place to undertake this so one question is also for professor prabhu sir Uh, so the person is asking what are the scopes for genetics and plant breeding in foreign research and can i include it with agriculture economics uh what is foreign research no no sir the person is asking no. can i pursue uh, no, genetics, genetics and, and plant breeding with hmm. foreign research and collaborate with, with foreign with research what is it with what research Uh, with what research? Foreign research. Uh, foreign, foreign. I guess the person wants I mean, to pursue the plant country. breeding in foreign. Yeah, yeah, outside the country. Oh, okay, yes. okay, okay. All right. Yes, and he's also asking, can I correlate yeah, yeah. it I, I, global I, I, economics? Yes, sir. Economics in future. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now uh, this is an intelligent question. The basic qualification required to take up uh, genetics and plant breeding, whether in India or abroad, uh, is that you need to have uh, uh, BSc. with uh, genetics somewhere in your core system and plant breeding uh, also in the core system if you have it then you will have done your masters in uh, genetics and plant breeding then only you will be qualified to do research in genetics and plant breeding otherwise minus basic qualification in masters you will not be able to do plant breeding msc either in india or abroad and there is absolutely no crisis uh, within india as far as this area is concerned and also uh, equal opportunity outside india in fact the maximum number of uh, post graduates in agricultural research are in this area only abroad okay the the maximum number of uh, qualified uh, researchers who go from outside the countries in developed countries is in this area of genetics and plant breeding in the agriculture sector okay so there is absolutely no uh, no crisis or no shortcoming in your planning to take up a research career outside india as far as genetics plant breeding is concerned now the intelligence part is about agricultural economics and uh, introducing this in between there uh, the only point uh, is that because you will not have been a masters in plant breeding and genetics you cannot be a geneticist and plant breeder with economics whereas you can look at the costing in making the research investment in genetics and plant breeding to solve a particular problem in agricultural economics goal point of view so that the uh, output expected will never be detrimental to the investment that is required in order to solve the problem which means you you cannot solve the problem through genetics route or not can be established if you link and only if you link the genetics plant breeding problem which is with a particular issue with agricultural economics if you are taking a project of that kind as an economist it it can be pulled not otherwise you you cannot be ms uh, uh, say agriculture economics with genetics plant breeding as an external point it cannot be right sir uh, sir Sur subrajit patra is also asking that what is the best university for doing phd in horticulture pomology in abroad as per your point of view as per my point of view uh, any of the european uh, systems such as the uh, netherlands uh, germany uh, uh, are uh, the best uh, biden engine is one of the best uh, for horticultural uh, research in terms of pomology or stone fruits uh, based system yeah yes sir thank you sir uh, we have professor arthur redacker who is a nobel laureate from france uh, we welcome you sir we have in the board professor rc agrawal sir who is the ddg education icar new delhi we have professor 
KV Prabhu sir who is the chairperson of PPV and FRA government of India in New Delhi and uh, Dr PK Upadhyay who is the organizing chairperson of this uh, webinar we have professor Arthur Redacker sir from France sir we warmly welcome you sir so your mic is not working could you please unmute your mic well you are speaking to me is it no, yes, sir. My, yes, sir. My yes, sir. Is, yes, it's, it's, it's yeah, working. You're no? audible now, yes. sir. Yeah. yeah. Sir, we have uh, Professor R.C. Agrawal, sir, who is the DDG Education of ICAR. We have Professor K.V. Prabhu, sir, who is chairperson of PPV and FRA, Government of India. We have Dr. P.K. Upadhyay, sir, with us, who is the organizing chairperson of this webinar. I just wanted to introduce to all our speakers who just uh, gave a lecture before you. Yes, you, you tell me when I when I should share a screen, please. Yes. Yes, sir. So, sir, uh, we have uh, Professor Arthur Redacker, sir, who is a Nobel laureate from France, and he was a professor and scientist at INRA France. Indra. Uh, yeah. A warm welcome to you, sir. Yes, Indra. Sir, I. Share your screen, your presentation from my side only. Uh, I hope you are fine with it. Uh, Professor uh, Redacker, sir. Yes, I tried to 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 share the screen. Uh, yeah, I am sharing uh, the screen for your presentation from my side only. Just give me a yeah. second if you allow. Mm. Yes, sir. I hope you are able to see your presentation. Uh, well, I, I... Okay, do, do you see my, my presentation? Can you see my presentation? Yes. Not yet, not yet. Ah, now yes. it is. Now it is. Uh, Yes, yes. You can see it now, okay? I will put full screen. I will put full screen, yes? Okay? Good. Is it okay now? Yes, sir. It's good now. It's good now. So, you tell me yes. when I should start. Yes. Yes, sir. Just give me a minute. So, the screen is being shared from my side. Uh, here, I, I have this, my screen here now. Sir, your is uh, screen is not being shared. Sorry, sir. My, my screen is not being shared? No, sir. Okay, well, what should I do so to, to share the screen? Uh, well, uh, just go for the share icon, which is being shown uh, down because it, it's uh, it, it's uh, I don't know what happened. Can uh, uh, play? Yes. Uh, I don't see. Uh... No, sir. So I'll share it from my side if you don't mind. I'll share yes, the screen from my the side. Problem, the problem that is that the, the, the uh, the uh, uh, presentation that you have is not a complete one. I have I, I have completed the presentation, so let's try again to see what what if, if uh, so. Uh, okay. So everyone can see hear you. So I, I share the screen now. Share the screen. Uh, share the screen. Uh, and, and apparently it's not it's not working. I don't know. Uh, was this is so the uh, Show the entire screen icon. Which is being displayed there. Well, yesterday it was it was okay. Uh, 
Este minuto. They asked me if this is cold. Oh. I guess there is some issue uh, he's facing. Uh, we tried a drill yesterday. You can take some more questions uh, if there is. I have to leave now. That's why. Yes, yes. Sir. Just wait a minute. I have. I need a, a, to to send the code and the, and to 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 enter the. the I, I just got it. Okay. I I got the code. Yes. Four, nine, eight, three, eight, nine. So the wind. Coming. Well, I'm, I'm now. I'm now in YouTube. Uh, maybe I should go back to, to the link that you sent me. Uh, uh. So if there is an issue, you can email me your presentation and I'll share it from my side. Yes, uh, just a, a minute. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, yesterday, integrated camera. Uh, yes, so audio screen, camera, audio, uh, green screen, uh, camera, setting. I don't know. I don't know why it doesn't work today. Uh, uh, display name, uh, enter studio. Can you see me now? Can you see me now? Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe share screen. Share screen. Share screen. And here, yeah, I cannot. I cannot go, go further. Uh, yeah. You must show the entire screen. There must be an option to show the entire screen. 
Yes, but uh, do you see my screen? No, sir. Uh, I cannot see your screen, sir. Do you, do you see my screen? No, sir. I don't know what to do. Uh, so you can uh, email me your presentation. I'll share it from my side. That will be an easier option, I guess. I, I can try to send you my presentation. Yes, sir. Dr. Redak got disconnected. Um. There's some short issue, I guess.
so yes so so you are in the show so that that man uh, i share let's see uh, if i what happens if i share it video file or share screen share screen yes share screen. yeah share screen share screen but when i uh, share screen i i, I enter uh, uh, somewhere uh, uh, and uh, Yes, but but then I, I it stopped here. It, it, I, it cannot go further. I I, have, I don't know. Do do you do you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you now. So good. I received your uh, presentation, and I'll just showcase your presentation here from my side. And yes, uh, probably we'll be able to see, it and we can run the presentation that way. That's right. Let's just uh, try a, a, la a last minute uh, uh, again, so with, with a link, and see what happens. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah. And what happened? So what? Yes, sir. Your screen is here with me. Yeah, uh, you, your screen is visible. You see my screen, and I, I must perhaps yeah. uh, uh, put put the full screen. No, isn't it? it yes, is sir. It, it's full screen. It's full screen now. Yes. For sir. you. Okay. Yes. But uh, uh, okay. It, but now, how, how can I change with? The, 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 the slides. Okay, it's working. Yes, I think it's working. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yes. Okay. Uh, fortunately, it's working. Apparently, can can we? Uh, you tell me when we start. Yes, sir. We can start it now. We have Professor okay. Arthur de Decker, sir, from France. He's a Nobel laureate, and Professor and scientist from Indra. Yes, sir. We yeah. can continue with your presentation now. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I, uh, and uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm pleased to give this presentation this morning, uh, in spite of some difficulties we had. Uh, I'm uh, not a Nobel uh, Prize, but a collaborator because we have a IPCC. It's an international team for for uh, making assessment of what is is is. Uh, uh, done in, in what is uh, produced on from a scientific point of view, uh, uh, everything which is related with climate climate change. So, and uh, I'm also from an international uh, 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 forum uh, for sustainable development in, Af in Asia and Africa, which is uh, of course with. Uh, uh, scientists from from several countries and from India, from Canada, from from uh, uh, Germany and from France and other countries, and uh, I'm also chair of Oikos Institute. So uh, I'm I'm pleased to share this presentation on challenges for sustainable agriculture and development in the context of, of eradicating hunter by 2030 and climate stabilization by 2050. So, Next one, I, I don't know. Oh, I can can I put the next one? Uh, yes, it's sir. it's blocked. So, so uh, I cannot go further. No. I guess again some issue is hitting. Your yeah, screen. I don't know what happened again. The same problem as, as before, because all of a sudden, no. Hmm. Yes, Again, due to some issues, I guess. So, 
you are in the, in the show uh, uh, at El Partage. I, can, I cannot change the slide. I, I, I am stopped. I'm stick to slide number one. So maybe if you can, from your side, put the, 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 the presentation on. I don't know what's the issue coming. Uh, let me sort it out once. Sir, is it visible now, your screen? Uh, I, I see uh, something, but I, 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 I'm waiting. I don't know what happens because it takes always time before I can share a screen. So uh, 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 it's not visible for me now, uh, but, uh, uh, but uh, so if, if I, no, I, uh, so, it's visible what what you, what you have here now is it for what i have or is it, is it your presentation uh, do you, i don't see the presentation do, did you put it on the screen Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me, sir? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, sir. I can hear you. Uh, am I okay. audible to you, sir? Yeah. But I don't uh, see. I don't see the the, the, the presentation. Uh, uh, yes, so. sir. Uh, actually, there was some technical issue due to internet connectivity, and we have worked on it. And uh, within just give me two minutes. Your screen will be visible with within two minutes. Just give me two okay. minutes, sir. Okay, fine. Yeah. Uh, I hope worry. you don't mind. Okay. Just two minutes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
Yes, sir. So I'll just show the screen. Yes, sir. Yeah. Is it visible now, sir? It's visible for me, yeah. No. Yes, it's visible for all, sir. Yes. We can continue now. Sorry okay. for the interruption, okay. sir. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, sorry for my interruption. And, and uh, so uh, I, I, I will now give my presentation on challenges for sustainable agriculture and development in the context of eradicating hunger by 2030 and climate stabilization by 2050. Next, please. Yes, here is an outline of my presentation. I'm just going to say a few words about the global challenge for, for 2030 and 2050. And then I will insist on implication of biomass production, conversion, and land use. Uh, and uh, then I, I will come back to this uh, uh, motto, which is uh, do more with less, less with what? But you have to hierarchize actions, otherwise we'll never uh, be able to, to reach these this targets. Then I will say a few words about carbon neutrality in agriculture. That does not imply removing all greenhouse gas emitting uh, uh, inputs. So that's very important. And uh, uh, justification of governmental economies interventions uh, and, uh, about Adam Smith uh, uh, recommendation, necessity of international solidarity. And then uh, I don't see the, the back of this, but uh, uh, then some, 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 uh, over, uh, some general issues. So next one, please. Next, please. Yes, uh, we we have. I'm not going. We have to consider when we look at at the use of biomass from for food. <coughs> I'm sorry, for food or, or for uh, for the, or for energy. We have to look at the whole chain from here, starting from 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 the left with stage one of cropland, and then we go uh, to con this is also production of energy, and stage two is conversion of of energy uh, or biomass by animals by industry and so on, and stage three is is the end use. We have, we have to meet uh, uh, the the the, uh, the basic needs of everybody uh, uh, that's that's uh, quite a, a big task and and uh, so i will consider today on only some some issues relevant to crop production that's the first stage and also livestock and bioenergy and 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 the third issue is food and health next one please so with, uh, 
17 UN Sustainable Development Goals, all governments, and I insist on governments, committed in 2050 to eradicate hunger by 2030. And uh, we will be uh, 0.8 billion people more uh, in 2030. That's a, that's a big challenge, but uh, it's even more uh, a, a bigger challenge for 2050. Next one, please. Yes, in 2050, we have not only to feed uh, uh, 9.7 billion people, that means plus 2 billion people uh, compared to today, and we have also to uh, uh, have, uh, to reach carbon neutrality, that's, that's uh, approximately zero net emissions by 2030. That's a big challenge to, 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 do, to reach uh, the, both uh, targets. Next one, please. So uh, today, today there's a still a huge gap between pledges of governments. But uh, he, on top, you see the country projection, uh, and uh, uh, b below you you see what what uh, what what uh, countries have pledged to, to that the reduction they have pledged, and here at, at the bottom right. Carb you see carbon neutrality uh, to reach uh, uh, to be remain below two plus two thousand two degrees Celsius in, in 2050. That's here, and and uh, uh, plus uh, 1.5 degrees six. It's even more, a steeper decrease, and and so there's huge gap between uh, what is pledged today and and what is going on and what should we should uh, achieve. So, next one, please. So, and uh, energy is the most difficult sector uh, for several reasons. And uh, up to now, in spite of all the, uh, the efforts that are made, uh, the evolution total energy supply has increased in the world. So, uh, and so that's that's really a, a big task. And, and uh, uh, bioenergy also has increased, but bioenergy has a different uh, status in, in this uh, whole system because uh, uh, it, it's neutral uh, from a point of view of CO2. And uh, it's also not recorded in, in the uh, national greenhouse gas inventories because in greenhouse gas inventories, we just, you just find uh, uh, gross emissions, and because uh, bioenergy is neutral, it's hardly uh, visible there. So that's the uh, first difficult task uh, problem, uh, because it, it's not visible when you just look at a, a national greenhouse gas inventories. Next one, please. So uh, the, that means to we to bring down the greenhouse gas emissions. We have to increase biomass production per hectare and improving the conversion. That's not only for food, it's also to replace fossil fuel. It's also for fiber and biomaterial. It's also to extend, to some extent only, uh, 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 to optimize animal husbandry, uh, we, to reduce methane emission per unit of milk or meat, we shall see at the end, and to optimize diets in particular. Uh, uh, we in, in affluent countries, we should reduce animal protein consumption. Next one. So uh, unfortunately, I cannot see what is on, on the button. So here is a, the change, the increase of greenhouse gas emission since since the pre-industrial uh, world, and and uh, uh, so here uh, you you see what it would go for population. And we have to come down now to close to, to, to zero net emissions by 2050. That means we need to have also to, to, to have also uh, zero emissions. That means carbon capture and, and storage and, and the, in the in the underground. And we need also to have negative emissions. That means biotech, biotech CO2 uh, carbon uh, capture and, and also sequestration in in, in uh, under, underground. So that's uh, several years we have. This has been on the table since 92 uh, when Bert Bolin uh, made his first presentation on technology, which should be considered in uh, in New York uh, at the, uh, when they signed the, the, the uh, climate convention. But uh, uh, at that time. 
time, uh, uh, no, not, not much progress has been made here uh, today, and, and it's apparently it's still quite expensive. That's a, that's a really a, a, a big challenge. Next one, please. So, um, and, and uh, uh, we have the first, apparently first, uh, 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 big power plant using biomass and with carbon carbon sequestration uh, will be in UK. This Trax power station it has just been presented a, a few a few weeks ago, and uh, uh, it, it uh, of course we, this this big plant uh, will will use biomass produced uh, in, in the UK, well, in particular uh, 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 miscontus, but it will also use. Uh, 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 um, biomass produced in in in, in southeast of, of uh, uh, the US in, in Florida uh, and by uh, shipped to to, to various uh, ports in in harbors in, in in England and then then you be used there and and uh, by 2030 they they expect to to have uh, to, to capture the CO2 and to store it in underground so it's it's a first it will be probably the first biomass uh, 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 planned with uh, carbon sequestration. So that's, uh, that's quite a, a new thing. Uh, let's see what will happen and how successful it will be. But uh, it's an important challenge and, and, and uh, we are happy that but, uh, but the UK is, is trying to develop that. Next one, please. So uh, for, for a country like India, but also for other countries in China and, and, and so on, uh, we have a lot of, of rice, straw, uh, and sometimes it's uh, it's burned in, in the field and, and it could be used better uh, by, to produce energy. And uh, for instance, uh, uh, here we have a, 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 a Spanish company who is making different bathing systems. So uh, I think uh, this could be used also in uh, in, uh, in in India and, and in other countries. But it needs some organization. So it's, it's, it's so of course there are some changes uh, to to achieve that. Next one, please. So globally, this is what you see in the emissions net uh, uh, gross emissions from 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 uh, uh, from, uh, from different sectors in, uh, and for instance uh, we have here uh, we have uh, uh, agriculture we have uh, uh, buildings uh, transport industry and and so and these are direct emissions and these are indirect emissions but for agriculture it is about a quarter of total emissions uh, coming from agriculture and forestry and land use so that means it's a it's a, a big a big issue and we have to bring this to reduce this drastically as as much as possible at least next one please so uh, emissions here in agriculture and forestry they are of course, 5.2 gigatons of CO2 come from CO2, uh, CO2 equivalent, and but also methane is also very important, uh, 4.5. But this figure is a figure with a, a G, a global warming potential for 100 years, and which is uh, the one that is used today officially. But uh, but actually, uh, if we are to uh, reach uh, zero emission net emission by 2030, uh, uh, you would have to multiply this this uh, contribution by two. So that's that's very important. Uh, you should not forget about uh, methane. So N2O is 2.3. That means it's, it's it's less than than methane at the world level, and uh, it has another characteristic because uh, this this emission can be compensated, whereas this emissions cannot be compensated, compensated for instance, by, by, by uh, livestock. So, so here we can compensate N2 emissions by having a higher uh, uh, biomass production. That's very, very important. Next one, please. Yes, and also we have to see uh, how this is uh, 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 this emission change uh, according to to uh, to uh, countries and, and uh, in particular uh, according to income average income per capita. So in low income countries, uh, uh, you have mainly uh, emissions from biomass, from 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 agriculture, forestry, and so on. So uh, that's that's very important here. But in other countries, uh, they have. Uh, 
in addition to 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 these uh, emissions, they have also other emissions, for instance, in the build in the industry and, and the transport sector, which is an important one, and and also in in energy sector. So it's it's uh, important to have this in mind because the emission the efforts to be to reduce emissions are much higher here, and it's it's also uh, what is. In, in, uh, uh, inscribed in, in a, a climate convention that uh, the rich uh, countries have to make efforts and to show the lead. Uh, that's important. But uh, so we everywhere we have to increase uh, decrease emissions because to to reach uh, uh, the target for 2050. Next one, please. Yes. Uh, so there are several issues to to reach that uh, uh, that uh, that uh, targets. Uh, some are technical and scientific issues. So we I should come back to that. There are also economical issues, and that's also an important uh, issue uh, at a world level. There are organization, organizational and social issues uh, from a point of uh, organizational issues. I just uh, mentioned uh, the, the issue of harvesting uh, uh, rice uh, straw, which is, has to be organized and so it needs some changes. There are also social issues and most groups, uh, even in agriculture, in particular in agriculture, uh, uh, they are trying to maintain their, sit their present situation and their privileges, and they prefer uh, ignoring some changes that are uh, necessary. And th that's a very big challenge because uh, uh, every group tends to uh, see that wh what he's doing is not important. And uh, well, if he do is doing something, if he's increasing the si uh, improving the situation, uh, it will not change much. But if everybody says the same, we will never be able to reach the target. So. So one very important thing is that everybody, every national and international institution, I insist on that because uh, most of the institutions are not convinced what they should do. And every government is not aware, if they are not aware and convinced of changes that are necessary, we have but little challenge to meet, to meet these targets by 2050. Next one, please. So... Uh, Point three is well, is uh, very often uh, you can read in the literature, do more with less. But uh, uh, very often uh, uh, people don't say what what less, uh, uh, and so we have to 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 give some precision about that. To to uh, less uh, first thing I, I, is is important for uh, for biomass for agriculture and forestry is to to use less land per unit of product service to to avoid deforestation. And that's that's important. We shall see that. The second point is to less input or more input. It's a question. Uh, uh, a more efficient use of inputs. And the answer will be more efficient use of inputs, but not less inputs. That's, that's really, uh, unless it's if they are in, inefficiently used. So, and the third point is better conversion and, uh, and management of, of biomass production and, and conversion. So next one, please. So uh, to, just to show the importance of land use change. Uh, this is a temperate uh, situation, for instance, in, in, in France, but in most uh, temperate conditions, we have the same. The average uh, uh, carbon stocks in, in, in uh, in in, uh, in in forest land is about 16 tons. Of course, there are quite variation, but these are averages. And in grassland, it's about 90 tons. Uh, 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 you have 300 tons of CO2 when you remove uh, the, the, when you deforest. You have uh, an emission of 90 tons if you uh, uh, switch from grassland to cropland. And if you look look what you have, the emission that you have uh, here uh, per hectare. Uh, uh, the gross greenhouse gas from inputs, but from nitrogen and, and for deep fertilizer, and also from irrigation and so on, uh, energy for irrigation, uh, it's about 2.7 ton of CO2 per, per, per year. So that means it's it's quite small compared to the emission that you have with land use, and these are gross greenhouse gas emissions. And that you have to consider net greenhouse gas emissions, and it becomes when it comes to biomass production uh, for food or for, the, or for energy, 
then we have negative we have already uh, uh, negative emissions because we be uh, if you take into account the, the energy which is in the biomass which is produced uh, that it can completely uh, 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 compensate the in gross emission that we have from by increasing inputs next slide please so these are the changes in, 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 uh, in under the tropics for Amazon forest for instance we have uh, about Point, 150 to 180 ton of carbon per hectare. That mentioned 507 between 507 and 660 ton of CO2 per hectare. That's much higher than in in in, 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 in temperate countries. And in the Sierra, those also we have uh, we have less trees, of course, but we have also uh, between 40 and 60 ton of carbon uh, per hectare. That means about the same as in as in Europe. So, next one, please. So that for, to, to reduce uh, 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 deforestation and land use, and so also conversion of grassland into cropland, we have to use the present land as efficiently as possible everywhere in the world. Next one. Uh, what is land use efficiency? It's not per yield, it's of a crop per hectare, but the total amount annual production per hectare of land. So, uh, for instance, per ton of cereal, dry matter, kilo calories, and ton of oil, we have to consider yields from main crops, that is only done, but also from intercropping and of multiple cropping. That's very important. Uh, we have to look at fallow lands, which is well, has disappeared almost uh, now, but uh, 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 it still exists. But uh, and land for in, we have also to consider land which is for uh, uh, pest, integrated pest management and other kinds of land which are necessary, which is not productive directly, but uh, which is important to have a, a sustainable agriculture. And uh, we have. Uh, uh, the additional ton of cereal, we have to consider the impact of land use change, which depends on change on land use efficiency. So if uh, we have a low land use efficiency, uh, we will need more land than if you have a high land use efficiency. But we shall see in the next slide. Yes, for instance, we can, we can compare conventional farming and low input or organic farming. I say it's, I, here we consider not uh, orchards or, or, or vegetable production, but, but uh, it's for staple food. So if we compare these two types of, of agriculture, for a staple food for nature, here, for instance, we have more input uh, to get two ton of, of uh, two, two, two bags of, of uh, cereal, uh, if we have low input organic farming uh, or low, uh, so that means we have uh, here we have less input per hectare, but uh, we need we need more land to produce the same amount. So that means we are going to decrease the wood production or, uh, or, or grass production if it's grassland and we are uh, uh, for, on half of a surface uh, land and we, also, we are also going to um, decrease environmental services that means for biodiversity water management water uh, cycling and so on uh, that's that's also important so that means we need to, for instance that's just a, 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 a if you compare the two systems, we need more land to produce same amount of food here. So that means it's really not an option for the future because we have a, a change in carbon stocks, we have change in 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 in, in, in land use and and uh, environmental services. Next one, please. So, how far can we go? Uh, we have a uh, in. in um, since 1815, these are uh, data from France. So these are average uh, yields for uh, uh, wheat, and, and they have been uh, inc have increased very uh, slowly up to 1950 uh, here. And in 1950, change, things changed because we started to to use more fertilizer, same thing with the fertilizer, and and then it increased up to 2002. 2000 year 2000 and, and uh, up to 80 tons 8 tons per hectare uh, these are quintals uh, 
and uh, uh, the average uh, uh, five year averages were increased, but now it's leveling off since 2000, and uh, uh, we are not sure if we can uh, may have made further progress. But uh, there's a question mark, a big question mark. Next one, please. The next one, please. Yes, it's the same in, in, in UK, we have the same evolution in all that set. For instance, this has been a measurement since 1860. So these are uh, uh, yields uh, of, uh, of wheat uh, since uh, without any inputs. So they are very low, uh, below one ton, uh, if they have no input. So that's uh, three years. But with inputs, they have increased, no? The average wheat yield is about the same as in France, about eight tons per hectare. Uh, and uh, uh, there are some con in some conditions, we can increase, we in could increase a little bit more the, the yields. And they expect, at, at least with the target, we are not sure that they are going to reach it, but uh, it's a target to, uh, to re achieving uh, 20 tons per hectare in 2032, that means in the next 10 years. So that, that's, uh, that's a big challenge, and uh, uh, nobody knows if it's uh, feasible and, and how, to which extent we can increase really uh, uh, this, this uh, uh, present uh, uh, wheat yield. Next one, please. So uh, we have already made a, a, a big uh, progress in in, uh, in using fertilizer more efficiently since the second oil shock. See, for instance, this is an indication of for the Netherlands. So, uh, uh, and it increased since the nineteen fifties. It has increased regularly, but uh, uh, it was quite. High, very high in in in, uh, in uh, uh, after just a, a second oil shock, for instance, in in, in the Netherlands, they used up to eight hundred eighty five kilo fertilizer per hectare in the Netherlands. That's really uh, something. And they then they have decreased the in input. This is same for 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 uh, uh, for France here, uh, uh, and uh, uh, of course in the United States they have never had such a peak in inputs. So uh, and the Russian Federation also. So uh, next slide, please. But in spite of this reduction of uh, uh, um, of uh, fertilizer. Uh, uh, yields have still increased. These are, for instance, in the United States, uh, uh, the, this is uh, the Netherlands, and this is for France. And so they are still increased. And uh, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that means we have be used uh, fertilizer much more efficiently than in the past. So that's, that's a good news. But uh, we, we should f go further in this direction as much as possible. So, And uh, here you see also that uh, there is another uh, important region where we can produce wheat, which is a federation, Russian Federation. And uh, but uh, at this stage, uh, the yields are still very low and in inputs are also very low. Then this is a place where we can increase. Uh, uh, we probably we, we uh, 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 wheat production and, and uh, land use efficiency in, in wheat production. Next one, please. Yes. So uh, can we do more in countries with already hi high land use efficiency? That's uh, in, if that's the case in in India. That's the case in 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 US. That's the case in Europe. So uh, uh, that uh, what can we do? So uh, this is the main topic of your conference, I think, today. Uh, we, we have, you have to see what we can, how you can use biotechnologies. And, and uh, uh, for instance, there's, I'm not going into details here, but they are very important. Uh, RNA silencing, uh, CRISP technology, etc. These are biotechnology which can help to further increase yields and fertilizer use efficiency. Uh, that's important. Uh, and uh, because uh, sometimes uh, 
uh, uh, still some 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 uh, inefficient use of fertilizer. Uh, it's also to reduce uh, pesticides, which is important for food and and for food to, uh, for to health. But but uh, and and due to climate change, we are also to see how resilience of, of plants can be uh, uh, improved. For instance, and how to have a higher uh, uh, resistance for in in uh, in face of uh, 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 higher temperature and extreme uh, climate events. That, that's uh, so. That's a, a huge task for people working in this area. And uh, so uh, we have uh, you have worked for the next 10 to, 10 to 20 years uh, for, to improve all this situation. Next one, please. Yes, uh, here you see how much land we have spared because due to uh, cereal yield improvements. So this is uh, 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 all what is in blue here is the land which has been spared uh, because of increase of yields of of, in, of grain. So that's a case in in, in many of uh, the countries where we high uh, with high land use efficiency. I say uh, that uh, that Europe and US and and, and uh, uh, India and China and so the, in, and some other countries. So that's very important. So we have contributed to that. That's already, uh, it's this, you don't see that in, in when you look at the uh, greenhouse gas inventory. And it's very important to remember that, that this is not visible in the greenhouse gas inventories because we, this uh, land use change has not happened. Otherwise, you'd have, have the increased uh, emissions. Next one, please. But there are uh, exceptions, and in particular, in least developed countries uh, in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, of course, uh, fallow land has gone in, 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 in Kenya, that uh, our colleague uh, Van Lauer uh, just made this presentation uh, two weeks ago, and, and uh, fallow land has uh, have gone. Fallows had gone, but but slash and burn never stopped, and uh, increase of yields uh, has been uh, uh, very small com here. You see, compared to the rest of the world, for instance, in Asia. So so it's, it, there's a big difference. And so next one, you see, next one. So uh, uh, you should avoid land use change before having improved uh, 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 land use efficiency. In, uh, uh, in Africa, because uh, here you all the different points, spots where you have a, a land use change, either deforestation or conversion of grassland to cropland, and so the emissions are, is up uh, in Africa uh, were about uh, two uh, one ton of CO two per capita. Uh, that's uh, about twice uh, the use of fossil fuel per capita in Africa, and it's about. Uh, 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 twice the emission of a country like France and, and a quarter of emission of the EU. Uh, so that's that's not negligible. So at the when we want to reach uh, zero net emissions by 2050, we have to consider all these these different aspects. Next one, please. Yes, uh, but there's still room, as I said, in, in to increase land use efficiency in many parts of the world. Uh, uh, of course, these are yields for uh, UAE yields in France, evolution. These are averages for OECD countries, uh, Latin America, so uh, only in sub-Saharan Africa have, have, have uh, yields remain very low, below two tons of per hectare, so of cereal, and, uh, but, but there is a lot of uh, room to increase that, that uh, production. Next slide, please. So, uh, one of the main uh, main reasons for, for so much such low input is is that they ha have very low fertilizer input. Uh, the average in world input uh, was in in 2013 uh, was uh, uh, about 120 kilo. Now it's 140 kilo. Uh, uh, per hectare, but uh, in most of our African countries, and uh, these these uh, countries like in Senegal, Madagascar, Niger, uh, 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 Algeria, Ethiopia, and so on, Mali, Tunisia, they are below below fifty kilo uh, per hectare. That's very low. That we call low input. That means in all these countries, there are a lot of uh, possibilities to increase the the yields. So we have, we have a second category. Uh, where we have uh, uh, between 130, uh, 130 kilo per hectare and 200, 250 kilo per hectare, where we should use uh, fertilizer more efficiently 
uh, as possible. But uh, but uh, some uh, progress can be made here in these countries. And then we have countries where we are which using too much fertilizer, in particular too much uh, uh, nitrogen, and which uh, leads to uh, unnecessary uh, nitrous oxide emissions and, and nitrate leakage, which is not good. So, I mean, these are, so in these countries, we, we could reduce the, the average amount of, of uh, input, uh, in particular of nitrogen. And, and in Egypt also, they are very high, but they have two, at least two, two crops a year. So they can also reduce it. But uh, of course, it's more difficult in some countries. But here, in particular in China, they, there's, a, there's a lot of, of uh, decrease that can, is possible. Next one, please. So here you see uh, also the cereal yield in 2018s. It just came out in a, uh, with our world data. So you see where we, the wheat yield, uh, so it's unfortunately, it's not visible here, but you have a, you have a, the, the uh, 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 yields here low. And dark green is where we have high yields. So, and, and a light green you have, and so, and when you have, it's very, very light. So that means that there's a lot of, I have a lot, very low uh, uh, production possibilities. Next one, please. So uh, if you look at the global nutrient imbalance, uh, uh, you see there are areas which are in, in blue and black, where nitrogen input is very, very deficient so uh, that's uh, so it very so there's no no sur almost no surplus of, of nitrogen so and and there are reasons where nitrogen inputs are very high it's all these countries where you have high yields but uh, i mean uh, the nitrogen could be used more efficiently uh, in these countries and these are efforts which are to be made in the future to reduce uh, nitrogen use and then nitrogenic emissions Nitrous, nitrous uh, emission. Next one, please. So, carbon neutrality in agriculture by 2050 does not imply zero gross emission in agriculture, in, in crop production. That's, that's very important because if you remove all inputs, you would decrease, as you have seen in, in, in Africa, you would decrease production or, and increase massively deforestation uh, uh, if you have to increase uh, uh, production, and this is the case in some in some countries, in particular in Sub-Saharan Africa, where we are expecting two, uh, one billion people more in, by 2050. So uh, you, this would increase CO2 emissions. So uh, again, I, I will uh, uh, insist on that. This is something that you don't see when you look at national greenhouse inventories. So. Uh, recommendation is uh, carbon neutrality is not no input or low input. It's it's uh, efficient input. That's very very important. So uh, a consequence of that is also we should not have carbon taxation for nitrogen fertilizer. And some economists, uh, having not looked at the whole system, have proposed in the past, and, and it's again the case in for instance, recently economists also suggested again to have a taxation of nitrogen fertilizer. I mean, uh, this will be completely unproductive uh, uh, to, to have that and will uh, uh, more complicate the situation. Uh, but giving incentives to produce nitrogen fertilizer with less CO2 emission, in particular by replacing natural gas and coal by, with hydrogen produced with, uh, uh, with uh, renewable energies, for instance. Uh, these are some companies, uh, big companies, uh, nitrogen producing countries, companies are, are, are considering that and they expect to reach, uh, uh, to be able to produce uh, neutral uh, uh, fertilizer uh, by 2030, yes. So uh, that means, so, yeah, yeah, that means uh, you will reduce the emission from the production of fertilizer, but uh, the emission in the field will still uh, remain, and we, for that reason, you have to use it efficiently. Uh, but you have to also another consequence is to you should uh, subsidize efficient 
uh, 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 biomass production and conversion. As we have seen. Uh, next one, please. Yes, and uh, all this, what I'm saying now, is, is contrary to liberal economy of Adam Smith. Of course, uh, uh, this is, uh, was a credo of, of uh, UK uh, uh, when they liberalized uh, in, in, in the middle of uh, 19th century. But uh, um, today, we are, liberal economy will never be able to bring down sufficiently greenhouse gas emissions in time. So that's very important. You, if you follow the trends in, in, in countries like, uh, in regions like Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, you will see, you see that uh, the, the progress made are very slow in spite of, of uh, some people promoting, trying to promote a uh, 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 green revolution also in Africa. But uh, uh, in particular, the, this NGO from Bill Gates uh, called AGRA also, uh, uh, they, they uh, promote the, the, the green revolution, but they, they say you should not uh, government should not interfere with that process, and so they will definitely they be sure that there will no be no rapid progress in in Africa, and and we will not be able to solve the issue. And the next meeting of a UN meeting on on uh, food security uh, will have take place next September. Uh, probably will not tackle this issue, which is a major issue. So they will dis dis discuss a lot of other issues, but not these main issues of how to, to increase the, the uh, productivity in Sub-Saharan Africa. So uh, the other uh, uh, important difference uh, important in, in, in liberal economy, uh, we will not be able to reach, uh, uh, to bring down uh, greenhouse gas emissions, except with high carbon taxes. But they will never be accepted by low income population and in France, we had, uh, everybody knows, the, the Yellow West uh, uh, movement and, and uh, so uh, all of a sudden we had the government had to stop the increase of carbon taxes on, on, on gasoline. So, uh, so we are therefore to consider medium carbon taxes that can be dedicated to increase uh, photosynthetically solar energy conversion and production. So that, that's important. Next one. Please. Uh, well, uh, we are uh, considering these taxes and to, to, to dedicate it to, inc to, to, for, to, to use more efficiently in, in every sector, but also here as we're dealing with agriculture and forestry in, in the area with um, increasing efficient biomass production and use. And we have to remind everybody. Uh, of course, we in India, you know that, but uh, some people in uh, and some governments in, in Sub-Saharan Africa don't uh, remember that, uh, that liberalism in agriculture did finish with the New Deal in the 1930s after the Great Crisis. So we said, it, I mean, uh, Wallace, which was a, a state secretary of, of, uh, of agriculture after uh, uh, at the beginning of the New Deal and then later on become vice president of the United States, we has, has completely changed this, this, uh, this uh, approach. And uh, so uh, uh, this uh, approach is no longer dominant except in sub-Saharan Africa. Next one, please. So, and if... Uh, Today, the present expenditure for agriculture, of government expenditure of agriculture, for agriculture in Sub-Saharan Africa, are between three and four percent. That's very low, and and uh, as the budget uh, uh, of these countries are very low, uh, we have to uh, to consider uh, to subsidize. As, as next one, next slide, please. Yes, we have to to, to consider subsidizing uh, inputs. Uh, that rich countries should, should consolidate uh, with, with uh, national governments uh, in, in sub-Saharan Africa uh, to increase the, the land use efficiency and that all these group of countries, uh, and that means rich countries should contribute to, 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 to increase the uh, land use efficiency in this group of countries. Next one, please. So, uh, this is for land use, and the, I'm not going to detail uh, for other uh, uh, options. For other, uh, we have also to reduce methane emissions for rice crops. That's from stage one here. Uh, but uh, this emission can, to some extent, 
simply reduced and compensated, reduced by having uh, uh, drainage to, to mid-season drainage and, and also by increasing yields. So that's uh, that's important and this should be done. And But the other kind of emissions from enteric fermentation, which are from stage two, which is not converting, uh, just converting biomass, not con converting energy, solar energy, uh, you have to You cannot compensate it with, but with renewable energy and additional biomass plantation in, in, in this stage one. And uh, the other option are there to feed animal better to reduce the, uh, methane emissions per kilo of milk or, or meat and uh, to reduce the number of animals when possible if uh, are other alternatives. And, and also for enrich in affluent countries to reduce uh, Uh, animal protein consumption. Uh, uh, sometimes in, in in Europe and US, you could divide it uh, by two uh, and still have enough uh, protein uh, per capita uh, to for have a healthy uh, a diet. Next one, please. So well, uh, I, I I'm not going into the details, but you will find more information in these uh, books. And uh, in chapter one, uh, 10, I, what I wrote on a completely animal analytical framework to reach global food security by 2030 and a carbon neutrality by 2050. Uh, so uh, uh, we have a, you have more consideration on livestock management in different regions of the world. And that's, uh, but there are also many other interesting uh, papers, uh, in particular from Rishi Bell and also from uh, Manfred Kern on, on uh, from Manfred Kern on about uh, increasing um, uh, Uh, increasing uh, vegetable protein consumption. Uh, uh, this is particularly relevant to uh, affluent countries. Next one. And also uh, in, in a paper which is in print, which will come in September 21 in the journal Food System. Uh, and uh, uh, this, this paper is called Agricultural Intensification and Policies for Hunger Eradication and Climate Stabilization. And also we have a a conference the next September in 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 in, uh, in, in, um, in Delhi, a uh, video conference, of course, because uh, in many countries the pandemia is not yet over. So unfortunately, next one. So I, I do thank you for, uh, and I also apologize for the difficult, the technical difficulties we had to for this presentation, but uh, I'm now open to your questions. So thank you very much, sir, Professor Ridecker. Thank you very much uh, for your uh, interaction with our audience. I hope there are a few more questions from audience uh, to Dr. Ridecker uh, on the topic on what he delivered a lecture just now. If anybody is interested to ask any questions to Dr. Ridecker, they are most welcome. So, uh, sir, here's a question for you. Sir, can you please suggest me some universities for PhD in food technology and agriculture in abroad? Well, it's, uh, it's difficult to, to find that, uh, but you can send me uh, an email. I have given the email uh, at, at the end of my presentation. And uh, uh, so you... I, I, You can you must specify exactly you want because uh, the the well uh, uh, the the uh, universities they have quite different approaches and and uh, so uh, of course each university is influenced by the, the local uh, thinking and uh, uh, this is the case in France this is the case in in, in UK this is the case in in US and in and other countries and, and uh, so uh, uh, it depends exactly what you want to study and and uh, at this stage it's it's uh, will be difficult to find a, a, a university where you have all these uh, different things together yes sir. Uh, any audience from Any audience who are interested to ask any questions to Dr. Rudeka? Okay, I guess no questions. If there are no questions, I, I would be 
uh, we'd be interested in the in the in the discussion that uh, and presentation we are going to have uh, about the, the biotechnology for to to make progress in these different areas, and uh, I, I would. Uh, uh, I would suggest you to consider the different areas and see what you can kind of improvements you can make. Of course, you have a lot of uh, a lot of competent people in 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 India uh, and uh, in different areas that I mentioned on uh, uh, CRISPR, uh, RNA slicing, slicing, and so on. But uh, so I would be pleased to to hear what what the, uh, we, we consider and what kind of progress we can make, we could make in the future. Brief in a, I hope there are no more questions from okay. anybody. Okay. That was a nice presentation, no doubt. It was crystal clear, clear from, from each, each and every, and every slide. slide. I think it relates also to some discussion that we had when we had the, this presentation when I was in, in Agra and, and uh, yeah. about the organic farming and, and uh, also about the emission on, 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 uh, on uh, uh, livestock. Uh, uh, and uh, so it's better different. There's an issue that are quite complicated to okay, explain. Yes, sir. One question is here for you. Yeah. Okay. How can India help in food scarcity at sub-African region, sir? Well, uh, well, at least uh, one one action can be be made. Uh, I mean, uh, the African countries should uh, imitate what India has done. That means, uh, first of all, to control the imports. That's complicated because of the customs, and it's quite difficult. So they try. Some of my colleagues, uh, like Kakunobiko, they say, but uh, they have to control the money, the the the, the, the currency, to to be able to uh, to limit the importation. That's one thing. And the other thing is at the international level uh, to, to, to insist upon the fact that Africa can increase uh, uh, the land use efficiency and uh, that uh, African countries should co-subsidize. I'm not saying subsidize because subsidizing is substitution for this government. We are not to, uh, I mean, uh, these are intermittent governments and they should uh, uh, develop their own policy, but they should become aware that nowhere in the world, except in sub-Saharan Africa, there are still the system which is a, 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 the liberal system is no, is no longer uh, um, uh, valid today and will, will not be able to, to reach uh, to a, a, at the same time development, which is a, one of a major uh, objective of, of, in Africa. And at the site, at same time, decrease uh, greenhouse gas emissions as uh, much as desired. So it's, uh, I mean, from a political point of view, India can have a, a good, uh, a good uh, support, be a good support. Yes, sir. Uh, for research, uh, also, it's for research, also. I mean, uh, uh, when I was in Isa, I remember we had a lot of. They have done. A lot of studies on palm, on palm uh, trees, and date palm trees, and so on, and and uh, they, they could uh, have bio, use biotechnology to improve the, uh, the productions. So there are a lot of uh, things that could be done in uh, in India, and uh, and uh, fortunately, uh, in India you are not uh, uh, restricted in in, in the research because uh, in European countries, for instance, uh, in spite of the fact that. Uh, uh, they have uh, done quite interesting work in in in, uh, in uh, biotechnology, for instance, for CRIPS uh, techniques and so on. But uh, you know, the GMO are forbidden in Europe, and uh, because they are just considering GMO to reduce uh, uh, fertilize uh, herbicides, and there are a lot of other options, but. Uh, from a political point of view, it's quite difficult to, to make this kind of research in, in countries like Europe today. And uh, the other uh, aspect is, of course, everybody wants to, to have a safe food. And, and uh, the other difficulties we have that for most of the people and because of commercial 
uh, reasons, uh, safe food is, is uh, considered as being organic food. And uh, that's why you have also to make uh, research uh, to reduce the, uh, the herb effect, uh, herbicides input and uh, phytocide input uh, for crop production. That's very important because everybody wants to have healthy food like me. Uh, but uh, but uh, I mean, uh, we have a, a big fight because of the uh, communication system and, and which is, uh, uh, which is con completely uh, uh, strange today. Sir, one question is coming from Mr. Kuldeep Singh. Uh, so he is asking, what is the reason from your point of view that Indian research sector is going back? Well, Indian research is going back? Yes, sir. Uh, well, like your your point of view. I, I don't think. Uh, I mean, I don't know uh, research everywhere in India, but uh, 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 I, I've seen very very good research institutes in India, and and so I think uh, uh, I'm, I'm not, I don't have the impression that it's going back. I have the impression that they are going to uh, pave the way for future uh, improvements and and uh, much better. And one of the reasons they. I, I'm quite confident it's because uh, your population in India is still growing. That means you have to increase the land use efficiency, uh, even in India, in the next in the next few years, because land uh, per capita is shrinking. So, so it's but you have to be become more efficient, and uh, so you have to make progress. So I, I can you cannot stop uh, doing progress, and and uh, I, I expect that you are going to to achieve that. <laughs> Exactly, sir. So, one question is from uh, YouTube. I don't know what's the name. Uh, university, uh, please suggest some univers university for postdoctoral fellowship. I, I don't, didn't get the. the, the, the so he's the, asking you to please suggest him a university for postdoctoral fellowship, a PDF. Postdoctoral well, fellowship, yeah. I, I'm not. Well, I, I said you. Uh, you can send me an email, but I'm not the best person to uh, to uh, uh, respond to that. I had a lot of students in the past, so I'm no longer involved uh, uh, officially. I'm retired, but I'm still working every day. Mm -hmm. But uh, 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 but I know contact with uh, with uh, fellowship, and and so it's no longer my my area. Okay, sir. So thank you. So here we have a question for the principal of RBS College as well. Um, uh, so the question for you is, sir, why RBS College is losing his status in research sector? No research has came out from RBS College in present time. This uh, question is for the principal of RBS College. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, it's, for, it's for Professor. It's for Professor Yuen Singh, sir. This question is for Professor Yuen Singh, sir. Okay. Hello. Good afternoon, sir. Okay. Hello. Am I audible, sir? Yes, sir. You are audible. Yes, sir. You are audible. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is a very knowledgeable lecture. And I hope it will be fruitful for the people of agriculture, biology, science, and uh, it is etc. It will be very fruitful. I want uh, some suggestions for the improvement of the research work in uh, my institution, especially in agriculture, field of agriculture. How can we improve our research? Huh. Well. <laughs> There, there is no single answer for that. I mean, uh, uh, research is a, a multiple facet uh, 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 system, and and uh, so you have to uh, to, uh, to 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 explore the different areas. And and uh, uh, but one one perhaps difficult issue is is uh, in, in many countries. I'm going to 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 switch to another country to, to not to singularize uh, uh, India. Uh, it, it, the social issues are quite complicated, and and uh, sometimes people want to go away from that, that issues. I, I'm I'm just giving an example of Madagascar. 
Madagascar is the country which has the lowest input uh, uh, per hectare of fertilizer. And in spite of that, and we want to protect biodiversity there. So, and, uh, and there is again a drought in South Madagascar to, today, uh, and uh, they are going to have uh, problems to supply the, the food, the, the population there. So, but they could increase drastically the production. But there are several constraints. There are social constraints. There are also constraints by in scientists. I remember one scientist I met, I told her, uh, you are doing quite interesting work, but uh, you should also suggest what you can do to improve the situation. And in particular, why people don't use uh, fertilizer. She told me, yes, I, I dealt with that question in the past, but uh, people uh, sell uh, they, when they get uh, uh, sub subsidies and, and, uh, for, for fertilizer, they resell it uh, elsewhere. But that's not a problem. If, if globally the system is improving, that, that's important. So they should work on that. And, but she, she withdraw completely with that issue and concentrated on, on more academic studies. So we have also to, to, to look at the, the social issues because that's, that's a, a major issue. In, in the past, when we had no, no not these targets, at least uh, to, uh, for food security, of course, there are something to people be interested. But to bring down greenhouse gas emissions, the average people will say, that's not my problem, it's, it's somebody else's problem. So, so uh, and uh, they must understand what, how they can improve the situation and what are the, 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 the limitations and, and uh, so social, social studies should be uh, also developed. Okay, sir, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Welcome. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, sir. It was a great uh, session with you. And uh, one question is coming for Professor Yuen Singh, sir. Uh, the principal of RBS College, Professor Yuen Singh, sir. A person is asking you why RBS College particularly is losing its status in research sector. Why RBS College is losing its status in research center? no uh, research sector no research has come out in present time from rbs college the person wants to ask you why rbs is losing its status in research like earlier probably rbs used to produce a lot many research stuff but no more so he's asking the reason why is it so I do not agree with you. Still, uh, research work is going good in RBS College, and some people are working here nicely. You can contact the research scientists, teachers here. They are working good, no doubt. Thank you very much, sir, for your response. And, uh, sir, uh, Professor Redeka, there's a question for you again. Uh, sir, please tell me about new research methods and technologies which can make our research more accurate in such department. Well, you, you have... Uh... Uh, you have more competent people than myself in in your in your country, and uh, I, I, you have quite efficient labs. And uh, I, I remember uh, in Hisar, I visited quite uh, 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 efficient labs in in different areas. And uh, I, I think uh, this is uh, you are, you have a lot of opportunities uh, to to improve the situation, and you never know exactly. Uh, what is uh, what will be successful when you do research, but you have to explore the different uh, uh, ways, and and uh, so I I think uh, uh, from a basic from biotechnology point of view, I think uh, uh, you you are in a good position in in India to make to for make further progress. So so it's, it's uh, uh, it depends on the university, and uh, and uh, I think. Uh, uh, you you will have uh, the conference on biotechnology and you will see what what uh, kind of research is proposed. I would be interested also in the result of this uh, 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 conference. 
Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Now I would request uh, the organizing uh, chairperson of this international webinar on challenges in global research in agriculture and technology, uh, Dr. P. K. Upadhyay, sir, who is also the head of the department genetics and plant breeding at RBS College Agra, uh, would like to request you, sir, to please deliver the word of thanks for today and uh, thank all our uh, dear viewers, delegates, our invited lead speakers uh, from India and abroad. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Anshman. Heartly pranam to all. It was a great experience today to see Professor R.C. Agrawal, sir, DDG Education, Professor K.B. Prabhu, sir, uh, Chairperson PPVFRA, Government of India, New Delhi, and author Ricardo, sir, from France, I would like uh, also thank uh, Dr. Yuen Singh, sir, Principal RBS College, Agra, all the delegates and viewers and invited guests. We will continue tomorrow with your few more international speakers tomorrow. The session will start 10 in the morning. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Lot of thank Dr. Ricardo uh, and others. So nice of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we'll continue with our session tomorrow at 10 a.m. in the morning. I hope uh, everybody will join tomorrow as well. It was a time great time seeing you. seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.